join us and discover beautiful beaches, rugged landscapes, pretty towns, desolate mountain ranges that sweep down to stunning lakes, unique architecture, history and folklore, no shamrocks, no shillelaghs and definitely no shenanigans, just naked Ireland. So this is the third and final part of our Ulster Folk Museum series and I hope you've enjoyed it so far. These beautifully thatched cottages housed a basket maker at this end beside his workshop and a fisherman at the far end. The building is original and was moved here from Ballyvolan on the southeastern shores of Loch Ness, so that explains the fishermen living here. The building arrived at the Folk Museum in the 1990s but originally dates from 1859. As you can see there are places to picnic in the park so it's worth taking advantage of that and spending the day here. It would take the best part of a day if you wanted to see everything without sprinting from house to house. In this part we're going to leave the town of the folk park and visit the farm and rural buildings as we walk through some really lovely countryside. This building is the weaver's house, again with its beautiful thatched roof. There's the spinning wheel. By 1850 this kind of cottage industry had died out as the big factories replaced the hand weavers. Close by we have this bleach green tower. Believe it or not this is a watchtower. Someone would be tasked to stay in here in order to keep an eye on the woven linen from the nearby weavers cottage that would be laid out on the grass to be bleached in the sun. No chemicals in those days. The guard here was not just looking out for thieves but was also on the lookout for stray animals which could also destroy the valuable cloth. It's not the most lavish accommodation. Here we arrive at the flax mill and its various farm buildings and as you can see there's livestock in the folk park here. Again giving the impression you're on real working farmland. Again we have a nice big fire going here and a lovely smell of turf. He's back. He's shown us where the turf is kept. Unlike the town of the folk park, there's quite a bit of distance between the houses here and some really lovely walks between them. But it does take time to get around. On a beautiful day like this it's an idyllic walk through the countryside. And there's all kinds of creatures to admire from the farm animals to little guys like this.
This is a spade mill, an original building constructed in the 1850s in Coal Island, County Tyrone, and moved here in 1960. It now contains an exhibition room adjacent to the old finishing room where spades of many varieties would have been completed. There were up to 120 varieties of spade made in places like this, each spade with its own purpose. And this is the mighty wheel that would have driven the hammers for the craftsmen. This is as good a time as ever to offer the film a like if it's been interesting and to subscribe to the channel and give us your support. You can see that the museum even goes to the trouble of planting out the gardens with vegetables. We see a group of school children up ahead getting the tour. And this is very much like a work in farmland. In fact, I guess it's just that. And this is the house of Coradrinan Farm. We'll have a quick look inside. And look at this big guy wallowing around in the muck. Beautiful dry stone walls here, still very much part of the rural landscape in many parts of Ireland to this day. Actually this farm was relocated from the Mourns near Newcastle County Down where these kinds of dry stone walls are very common. It's just so peaceful here. I guess I should say that I'm visiting at the end of May and during a weekday, so perhaps that's why the place is so empty, but it's so good to have the whole place to myself. Here's another visitor. And you can see how the thatch is held on here. And look at this interesting building with its stone roof. I don't really know much about this. If you know specifically what kind of animal it's for and why it has a stone roof, let me know in the comments below. Just check out the bucolic beauty of this landscape. You'd hardly know you were in a museum at all. And more farm buildings further along. It's great to be left to your own devices right out here in the country to explore these buildings unaccompanied. As I mentioned in the previous film, occasionally there'll be staff in costume in the buildings that can tell you more about the place and its history, but it's nice being here in your own too.
This is quite a grand farmhouse, I'd say, judging by the size and by the furniture. More company. And now we're approaching Hand and Pen Orange Hall, built in 1884 and moved to this location in 1995 from County Monaghan. This hall was used by LOL, that's Loyal Orange Lodge, 597. The simplicity of the layout and furnishing in the interior is typical of orange halls of the period. It would have been used for social gatherings of one sort or another. And this building up ahead is another national school. You may remember we visited another one in an earlier video. It was built in 1865 and dismantled and moved here from Bambridge in 1980. Apparently this school was to accommodate 100 children, which may seem unbelievable when you look at the size of the building, but there were many absences from school due to illnesses, truancy and children being required to work on the farms. Finally as we round this corner, we visit a working forge. As we watch this master craftsman in action, please take a moment now to like the video and to subscribe to the channel. This encourages more videos in the future.